Hey guys, how's it going? So in the last video, we talked about uh, doing projects, right? So we went over the solutions of some projects. In this video, what I wanna talk about is dictionaries. They're very important in a lot of programming languages. In other ones, in C, C++, they might be called maps. In Python, it's called a dictionary. So let's see what it is about. Okay, so uh, essentially the idea behind dictionaries is to map keys to values. Hopefully that defines everything, right? <laughs> no, basically that's a very cryptic definition that I gave you if you don't know what it is. Yeah, it maps two things, okay? So uh, anytime you have a relationship between two things, you wanna use dictionaries. And when you don't have a relationship be relationship between two things, you wanna use a list. For example, if you wanna just remember a bunch of numbers and that's all you care about, you wanna use a list, okay? So for example, I only care about a bunch of numbers like this, I want to use a list. Now, what if I want to know a way where, hmm, I don't know, I use my cell phone right i use this thing over here and using this thing i can look up a person's name and based on that person's name it gives me back their phone number right or if i type in their phone number it kind of goes the other way around whatever how can we do that well that's the beauty of dictionaries my friend so you're going to learn something very powerful today so let's let's go at it Let's say I wanted to make a phone book, right? With what we know in lists, I mean, can you think of a way how you might do it? I don't know, I mean, you could store um, numbers, right, like this as a string, and then store the second number as a string and go four, five, six, two, two, four, four, three, three, right? Something like that, whatever, these are not, are clearly very silly numbers but okay and then you can say phone book and give me the zeroth number phone book give me the first number also notice we're using something different for coding we're using repl.it right so it's actually spelled uh, repl.it and the beauty of this is that uh, it teaches you how to code while it, it makes it very easy for you to code you can use this without having an actual um, working environment locally downloaded onto your computer. You can just run your code on the fly. And what I'm going to do for you guys is once I'm done with this session, I'm going to take this link and paste it into the YouTube description. And that way you can actually get access to these notes directly. Okay, so you'll be able to come to this link and get, for example, the link right now is this. Okay, by, but by the time we're done with this video, the link might be different and I'll post the most updated link for you guys in the YouTube um, description, okay? So the website is repl.it and you can pick programming language Python for your programming language and then just code here, okay? So let's check out what this does. Let's make sure to add print, print, check it out. So you can see you have one, two, three, and four, five, six, right? You're printing out the zeroth element and then the first element of this list. That's great, but I mean, it's not really fun to remember names as numbers, right? Because you're not gonna be, you're not gonna go, oh, I'm gonna call you zero, Johnny, and I'm gonna call you one, Bob. And then every time you have to look at Johnny's number, you're gonna type in zero to get back Johnny's number or one to get Bob's number. That would be terrible. And what if you had stored hundreds of people in your list? Then it gets really complicated. But now let's use dictionaries. Here's how dictionaries work, okay? Let me describe right here in notes. Um, dictionaries, okay? Here's how they work. You have some dictionary. We will call it a dict, okay? And, uh, you, and the store key value pairs. So if you put in a key, it gives you back the value, okay? And how you store things into a dictionary is like so. Your key goes here and your value goes here. Okay, let's set a key one, value one. Then we can say key two, 
uh, value to, okay? And you can keep doing this all day. All right, now let's create a dictionary, okay? So let's create our uh, example phone book. So I'm going to say Kazi, which is my name, which is my last name, but I go, I go by my last name pretty much everywhere. So we're gonna take the string Kazi as the, Kazi is the what? Is that the key or the value? If you said key, good job. And we're gonna store the number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Now notice that I'm storing this as a string and not an actual number, like an integer or something. Why do you think that is? Well, think about it. If I remove the quotes from here, what is this gonna do? It's gonna do one, two, three, minus four, five, six, minus seven, eight, nine, zero, and I'm gonna end up getting back uh, negative 8,223. So it's actually gonna end up storing it like this. That's not what I want. I want the exact number. So usually when you want things exactly how they are, strings are perfectly good data type to use there. And now I'm gonna say Bob, and I'm gonna store Bob's number as, um, okay, is this a, which key is this? This is the second key, and now this is gonna be the second value. I'm gonna store his number as 222, 222, and 2222. Very easy number that Bob has. He gets tons of um, wrong calls and he gets very annoyed. Now, to make it a little bit nicer on me to read this dictionary, sure, I can have it as a long one line, but as you can imagine, as we begin to store multiple people, it's gonna be spilling over to the right side. So what I wanna do is make it easier on my eyes and make it easier to uh, type. So I'm gonna go to the start of the line, hit enter, and Python knows what to do with it and where to put it, and I'm gonna go to the start of this line and hit enter, okay? I'm also gonna go here and hit enter. Uh, and I'm gonna go here and hit enter, okay? And what this does for me is it just makes it easier for me to read, okay? Kind of like this. Um, and I can just simply start putting things in here. We can leave that here, there, that's not a problem. We can leave that one right up there. Uh, and I can put in another person, right? Cat, cat, cat. Let's just do cat, call her cat. Let's say her number is 333, 33333, okay? And now what I can do is I can do phone book and what's the way I can get back Kazi's phone number, right? So imagine you go to your phone, your iPhone or whatever you have and you simply swipe up or down, right? You go to your, um, where's contacts? How does contacts work? I go to my contacts and I type in, let's say my name, right? So how does it find it and how does it give me back the actual number? Well, today you're gonna find out the secret behind how it works, okay? So it takes in the key or my name, Rafi Kazi, and it spits back the value associated with it. It could be my email address, it could be my phone number, it could be whatever the heck I want it to be, right? So now let's go into phone book and we can say Kazi, right? That's, you put in the key, and this whole thing liquefies and turns into the value, okay? So that whole thing turns into one value, okay? So let's print it out and let's see what we get. And I'll break it down how this expression works. So we got back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Phone book is just this whole dictionary starting with the squigglies, right? So phone book is this thing right there and I'm indexing that phone book by Kazi. Okay, so as you can see, I have this list here and I'm simply indexing it by QAZI, okay? And once I index it, what do, what happens here, right? Once I index it by Kazi, I just get back the value. So this whole thing liquidates into that and then that result actually gets printed out on the screen, okay? That's how the dictionary works. Now, let's say I wanted to make it a little bit more complicated to where each person had, uh, you know, like their names and each person had their own email address associated with them and whatever, right? So we can make it a little bit more interesting. For example, let's say that 
I wanted to add more values associated with Kazi. I don't want just his phone number, but kind of like how my phone does it, it also has Kazi's email addresses and it also has Kazi's home address and whatever else, right? So how would I do that? Well, what I need to do is I need to have one key that gives me back multiple values associated with it. Here I have a key Kazi, I have a key Bob, and I have a key cat. So what I need to do to Kazi, for example, is make it give me back multiple values. Well, what's a pretty darn good thing to give back multiple things? Hmm, I remember, it's a list. How about a list of things? So let's turn this from a bare string to a list that contains one, the phone number, and then we can say two, it contains uh, one email address. So we can say, uh, Kazi at Kazi.com. Okay, fake email address. Let's close that down there. And okay, sweet. So now we have a list containing two strings inside of it. The first at first index, it's a phone number and then or is a zeroth index rather. And then at the first index, we have the email address. I can do the same thing to the other ones. But let's just play around with it and see what we get. So I'm going to change this from phone book Kazi and I'm going to say, okay, I know that once I run this line of code, what I will get back is actually this list. This whole thing is actually going to evaluate to the value of Kazi, right? So you put in the key, look at the formula at the top, right? You put in the key and you get back the value from the other side. So I'm going to run it and let's see what we get. So you can see that we get back the value. I know that this thing is gonna turn into a list. Then I have to think about how can I access different things from the list? Let's say my question to you was, can you get me Kazi's phone number? You would say, okay, I'll get you Kazi's phone number. I know that it's inside of a dictionary where the key is Kazi, where there is a key Kazi. And if I access that key Kazi, right? If I access the key, uh, the dict, uh, and if I access the key Kazi, I get back a list of things containing his uh, phone number and uh, email, right? So you're like, hmm, now I know that I have a list of things. How can I access things inside of a list? I remember how you access things inside of a list is based on the index number, right? So for example, if I go up here, uh, if I have to access the first element or the zeroth element of a list, I would do this. And this gives me the first element of the list. Whereas for a dictionary, you would actually put in, uh, for a dictionary, you would actually put in a name or something, something that's nice and easy to remember. In a list, you use numbers. So then you go, okay, well, I know that Kazi's email address is at position one right? This is index zero and this is index one. So if I ask you the question of get me Kazi's email address, you know that this whole expression evaluates to a list. Well, then you can just say one, right? Just like this thing over here. And let's change that to zero element of the list just to be very accurate. Let's hit that and you can see that I get back Kazi's email address. Well, what if I wanted to get um, Kazi's phone number. I would just change this to a zero. And you can see that I got back that same thing. Now let's say I want to do the same thing for Bob, right? Turn this is a phone number. This is Bob at Bob.com. And then we have, uh, let's turn this into a list of things. And let's call it cat at cat.com. And we have this closing. Oh, I have to Make sure that I close my quotes here, close the quotes there. Okay, great. So I have a phone book. Let's get the terminology, right? Let's just practice with the terminology. It's good to say it over and over again. I don't care if I sound crazy and I, you shouldn't care if you sound crazy, but understand the terminology because it's gonna help you be able to research it better, understand it better, synthesize the information better, and be able to write better code ultimately because you will understand all of the data structures. Whereas if you just keep mumble and hand-waving, 
you're going to get very confused later on. You might be able to get past some of this stuff, but then when we get into lists inside of dictionaries, inside lists of dictionaries, it's going to get very complicated. You're gonna be like, oh man, I wish I learned the terminology when it was nice and easy. So let's, let's just talk through it. I have a dictionary that contains how many keys? Three keys. What's each key's name? Kazi, Bob, Cat. What do each of the keys contain? Each of the key contains a value and that value is a list. Okay, good. Each key contains a value, which is a list. That's good. And how many elements does each list contain? Each list contains two elements, right? As we can see right here. So now if I wanted to get a cat's number, I could do cat and I can say zero and I get back Three 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 three. So let's give it an example. Let's give it a run, and you can see on the right hand side that's what I get back. Okay, so I will leave this here for you guys, and I will link you guys to the code so you guys can go and play around with this stuff as well. Okay, that's it for dictionaries, and we will get into its better use cases later on. For now. You're gonna watch Boolean Algebra Jiu Jitsu after this video. Great job guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.